her values and I'm gonna do another tutorial on bell bottoms a lot of people want to know how to make these snazzy dazzy bell bottoms and I'm gonna tell you how to do that so um, first you need to get your pattern and the pattern that we use is CKC Persia they have a baby version and they have a girls version so you're gonna want if you're selling um, if you're selling to sell the baby one goes up to 24 months 18 to 24 months and then the girls one is like 2t up to like I think maybe I don't remember 14 maybe I don't know it's it goes up pretty high so um so we sell in our shop we sell clothes we sell the bell bottoms up to girls eight um, so depending on what size you sell in your shop depends on if you need both patterns you just need one if you just want to go up newborn to 18 to 24 months the baby one's fine so this is the baby one here um, <clears throat> this is I'm gonna be doing the 9 to 12 month one because we have an order and I'm just gonna go ahead and sew through the order to show you guys how we do it from start to finish Okay, so first what you do, obviously, is download the pattern, order the pattern online, and you'll need a front piece, a back piece, then you will need a bell bottom piece, and then um, this bell bottom piece, I've actually taped it together to make one, because I like to do things on a double fold, just because it creates a, um, it's just easier for me to do things, I don't know why, but so like this is a whole piece. It's like opens up and so it's a half a circle basically and I've made it into a quarter of a circle and then I'll just cut it on a double fold so that's why this one looks a little different I folded it in half to make it a quarter so that I'll cut on a double fold and get the same result this is the same way this is a whole this is a half of the um, I folded it in half this is the waistband they have one long piece and I just fold it in half and then I'll cut on the fold um, and you can write that on there if you choose to do it like I do. I just remember how to do it because I've, I've done so many for orders. But if you need to remember to cut on the folds, write that on there so you remember that um, you need to cut on the folds. So I don't, I don't write it on there. You can do that. Okay, so you got your pattern pieces. Okay, so now we got fabric. This one in particular is going to be velvet, stretched velvet. I love this fabric um I also hate this fabric <laughs> velvet is not the best um it's very cute when it's done but it's not the easiest fabric to sew um but they're so cute when they're sewn up so we're gonna get this cut and I'm gonna turn the camera move my sprites out of the way all right yeah. all right okay hopefully it'll stay like that Okay, so for the same way we did with the bummies, um, there is always a salvage. You always have to pay attention to how you're cutting your fabric, otherwise the garment will not fit correctly because not all fabric is four-way stretch. Um, what it is, it's easier to work with because you don't have to worry about it so much. But still, it's you gotta be careful with how you're cutting your fabric, otherwise your fabric is not gonna the garment's not gonna fit. Okay, so with the I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. With the velvet, <clears throat> it's important that I like to go ahead and cut them out right sides together because it kind of like helps it stick to itself almost. Um, I guess that's how you would say that. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the waistband out here. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. So here's the, let me scoot this back so you can see. Fuzzy piece of fabric there. Okay, this typically with velvet, it's also gonna give it away as far as how the, where the selvage is. The selvage typically rolls um, on these types of fabric. But again, to figure it out, feel stretch it. So I go again with the selvage. It doesn't stretch that much. See, but when you go this way, it stretches quite a bit. So we're wanting the stretch of the garment to go this way. All right, so we're gonna fold this over here and we're gonna cut out the waistband. 
remember my waistband, I folded it in half, so I'm gonna cut on the fold. Here's a fold right here, I folded the fabric here. So these are the raw edges, and here's a fold. So I'm gonna butt this up against the fold here, and then making sure that this is, I've got fabric here, and I'm gonna cut. Cut down, pull that up. Let me go ahead and grab my weights over here. My handy dandy pattern weights that I made. Just cut down like that. And then another thing about velvet you'll see here in just a minute is it creates this like it gets velvet everywhere. It gets these little fuzzies everywhere. So I go ahead and I stock up on these lint rollers. <laughs> specifically for velvet um, and so then you'll just take this pattern piece off and then since it's already put together just like we did the bummies if you've watched the previous videos just like we did the bummy waistband this this waistband is exactly the same so you fold it in half which we've already done and then you're gonna fold it again this way and that's the seam that you're gonna sew and it's going to be really easy and not as bulky to go ahead and just sew it that way. And so to keep it all together and neat, I'm going to go ahead and pin this so we have that waistband all together. And so the, remember, that's the part, that's that sandwich seam that I talked about. But I like to go ahead and sew that up, and that's my waistband cuff, basically. Move this over to the side. We got the waistband done. So now let's cut our legs. Find the other piece of fabric here. <coughs> All right, let me scoop this back a little bit. these together um so basically what i was saying earlier is when it says you're going to cut two mirrored pieces pretty much all that means for you to do is that if you're going to you're going to cut two you want two pieces and you want them to be mirrored so basically if you fold the fabric you cut it and you cut like they fold the fabric like this and then you put the, the piece down they're going to be mirrored when you cut them out so now you, when you cut Around this piece, you're going to cut two pieces out, and they will be mirrored because you fold it, you cut on the fold. See what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my weights on here. Put my weights on there. Grab my other ones here. Scoot this up. Um, and puzzle piece it to where you save fabric so you're not, like, wasting a whole bunch is what the best way to do it. So you can see here I try to utilize the best amount of of space possible really to save fabric okay so let me grab my rotary cutter and somebody had asked what kind of rotary cutter this was and i think i just grabbed this one from walmart because i had got um, frustrated with the friskers one and apparently there's some sort of warranty somebody said something about a warranty on the friskers one and i wasn't familiar with that but apparently you can send it back in or something i never tried it I just got frustrated because it kept um, it kept unlocking basically. And this one, um, somebody also asked. They said the retractor doesn't look like it had it has a retractor on it, and it does. It does. You pop it up, and it has the guard on it. Um, just protect you from you know. I just never do it because up here my daughter is two, and she can't reach the top of the counter yet. She's getting there. She can't reach the top of the counter yet. But um, this is my rotary cutter. It is called Westcott titanium and then I buy the blade replacements online on Amazon I can link what we use um, they're hit or miss but they are a lot cheaper in bulk than buying them from Walmart so um, you get what you pay for I guess but um, that's what I use this is my handy dandy rotary cutter um, Friskers is great it's just once you go through a few times it gets crazy so back to the back to the belt bottoms 
Okay, so these, you are going to cut out the entire piece. You're not going to cut on a fold per se. You have folded the fabric, but you're cutting the entire piece out. Um, so we're going to go ahead, and what I like to do is I like to go ahead and cut the bottom part here, and then fold that piece, and then I like to make a straight line so that the next um, thing I sew, it has a straight line piece. So I can go ahead and um, the next thing I'm trying to cut out. I go ahead and make a straight line so it's easy for my next project with whatever, whatever I'm using this for. Um, velvet's a little fickle sometimes, so you just go ahead and make a... So then that's straight line, ready to go for the next project. Um, plus, then you're working with less area here. So then I'm going to go ahead and keep sewing around here. Sew around there. Again, velvet's weird and so it'll roll up. Just don't cut your fingers off. If you guys see something, smoke or something, I'm diffusing essential oils right now. Trying to get over the flu. Um, it's day six, I believe, now. And so I'm pretty, pretty much out of the woods, but still... This sinus stuff is getting ridiculous. Um, velvet might not be the best thing to be sewing right now with a, with my sinuses like they are. But this is what I was talking about. I don't know if you can see it falling off. But there's like, it's like everywhere. And that's what I use the lint roller for. Because it gets crazy. I'll show you my rubbery cutter here in a second. It's probably a really good idea if you're sewing velvet a lot to go ahead and wear a um, a mask because it gets crazy. And the serger, if you have a serger using it, it already picks up uh, like sewing dust particles and whatnot, um, fabric particles. But see, here's my rotary cutter. That's all on my mat right now too. So like if I was to come in and cut like black, all of this would be on my black fabric, and that's just unacceptable. <laughs> Let me go ahead and move these out of the way. And now that we've cut these right sides together, um, I'm not going to pin them because I've already got them where I need to cut them. Um, they're already together, and that seam right there that I'm holding is what I'm going to sew first. The long seam, not the short one. The long one is what I'm sewing. That's going to be the waste. A lot of people will accidentally sew this part as the, the inseam, and it's not. It's this. Not the inseam. What am I trying to say? I don't even know what that's called. <laughs> that is the inseam. This, is, this part is the inseam, and this part is the waist part, and a lot of people forget and they'll sew this part, and then they'll be upside down, and they're wondering why they have no room for their butt. <laughs> for their kid's butt to go in it. And it's because they typically, they did it upside down. Um, it's easy to do when you get um, in the smaller sizes. It's really easy to do. But, so we're going to move those out of the way. We've got our waistband. We've got our leg pieces. Now we need to do the bell pieces. But first, I'm going to go ahead and lint roll my mat here. Before it gets too crazy. And then I just, not, I just, Hit this on the trash can and it cleans it off for me. <coughs> Jeez, me. Move this out of the way. Move that out of the way. Alright, as so as you can see, that was white and now it's red. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so next we're doing the bell bottom piece. Um, so that's pretty much not gonna be able to be used for this project. We're gonna go, we're gonna flip it over and use this side. Move this out of the way. And it's super staticky too. That's the only thing about velvet that's also a little ridiculous. Okay. So next we are cutting the bell part out. And so you're gonna wanna fold it once. And cutting on a double fold. Um, like I said, this pattern 
If you print it out like it shows you to do and you follow the instructions like it tells you to do, it's going to be a half circle. And so you'll only have to cut on one fold. So it would be like this and you just cut this part out. And then you cut right here out and that would be what you do. I just find this easier and it's easier to store if you're selling these patterns and you have to print them out and keep them. It's easier to store that way. So, um, what you're going to do. So you're going to fold it just enough to get this part for it to fit on there. But then you're going to fold it again. So I'm going to fold this over. So I'm wanting to fold it to about right here to meet up. So I'm going to fold over here. Okay. And so you're going to smooth out the wrinkles of this fold right here. All right. So. This is now folded, and this is now, this is a folded piece and a folded piece. So you're going to put your piece like this. I'm wasting a little bit, but it's okay. Um, Alright, so you're going to grab your pattern weights. And you can use anything for pattern weights too, anything that's heavy. Um, I like to use these. These are washers from the uh, I think Home Depot. And I just put wash, a washi, whatever that stuff, tape is. Put tape on them they look really ghetto but it gets the job done okay and so for these I like to do this I like to go ahead and cut a straight line same thing with this I like to go ahead and cut a straight line just to go ahead and cut that out and so that all of my fabric is straight edges rather than like a big random curve in the middle of my fabric it's just what I do works for me you find your system if you want to do it like me go ahead okay so here we go these, you are not going to cut here, and you are not going to cut here. The only places that you're going to cut is this round part right here and right here. So if you watched the video of me um, showing you how to add a skirt to a bummies, this is the same way. Same thing. So it's a double fold, this exact same type of skirt, but this is going to be the bell bottom part for the leg, um, for the bell bottoms. So, you know, go ahead and cut. Watch your fingers. And then for this one, you're going to want to snip, let me show you, I only do quarters, I mean um, halves on this one. If you've watched the bummies, I like to mark, um, like to make a little snip and that's how I match up my points. I just do two. And so the, the part that was folded, like that's the two sides here, that part. And then this was the like one fold. I like to go ahead and take these two right here while they're already together because they're even. And cut a tiny little snip there. And a tiny little snip there. And then when you open it up, that's a full circle. It's inside out right now. The velvet's on the inside. but um, So that's a full circle with two points that I'm going to match up to my leg seams um, to sew on. So we got one bell and one more. We're gonna repeat the same thing again. Now that you've already got it cut out, you can pretty much see where you need to fold um, the fabric. Because you've already cut it out once. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and fold it over. <coughs> okay. And that's what I meant by it. We've already cut it out, so you can kind of see where I'm gonna to need to fold it. I could probably fold it a little shorter this time because I cut off a little extra. All right. About right there. And again, fold out, smooth out all those wrinkles. Make sure it's a smooth piece of fabric. And you're wanting a lot. Remember, line it up so you have that. And you're going to put this hot, small circle in the corner here. So this is going to be a fold, or this is going to be a fold. I'm going to cut here and here. I'm going to go ahead and add my 
my weights just to set it on there, make it nice and even. Again, because wear just for tidiness sake. Throw that piece away. I'm gonna throw this over here because I'm done with it. There's my velvet. Just tap it on the side of the thing and it's cleaner. Um, again, this is the double. Oh, you can't see it. The part with the double seam, the double folds here. I'm going to go ahead and snip those corners or snip those pieces right here. Basically, marking my halves. Marking each half piece so that I can match it up to the leg seam and I'm ready to sew the bell onto the legs. All right, so now we have two full circle bells. We have a waistband and we have two front pieces and two back pieces. All right, so we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and I will show you what to do from there. And we're gonna, I'm gonna use the serger. You can use the sewing machine. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna start doing now, I'm at the serger, um, my settings are always the same. I, I rarely change them. Um, so if you've watched any of the other videos, you can, I showed my settings in the Bummy Me video. If you wanna go check that out, it's the same settings. Um, so basically we have our, pieces here. Um, this is the front piece. We're going to sew this seam right here together. Same thing with the other one. It's that exact same part. This part here. We're going to sew together. I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Make a serge seam. And do the same thing with this back piece right sides together so that seam make sure it doesn't move you can pin it if you need to and sometimes your machine will do this and it'll start trying to go up into your sewing machine just snip it so it doesn't keep going. Pull it. And then snip it off again. Okay. So, what you're going to get here. Snip all my tails here. Alright. So, then you have a front piece. Front piece. And a back piece. You see there's the leg hole. All right, so you're gonna put your back piece down. Let me see this. Put your back piece down. And you're gonna put your front piece on top of it. Like this. You're gonna sew down on the sides. You sew the sides down, you can see. Ooh. So match up the side pieces and sew it down. Remember, it's right sides together. Okay, so you can see we got one side seam here. One side seam. So if I was to open it up, that's what it would look like right now. I'll close it back up and then sew this last side seam and then we'll sew that leg seam in just a second. So now let's 
left is the leg seam here. That's the, and now they're upside down. You can see, put the middle points here, which are gonna be the seams. And then just sew, sew in a curve here. And so the pant part is done. This is the pants part, and it's inside out. But as you can see, the back is higher than the front to account for the booty. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so you're going to flip these out. Flip them right side out. And you can see how they look. That's the pants part. You can kind of just mess with this just a little bit to get it to go correctly um so that's that part now we're gonna grab our waistband here in a minute so our waistband we've already pinned when we cut um so you're gonna fold it you fold it in half and then i fold it half again and that's how you get this <clears throat> So you're gonna make sure your raw edges are together on this seam because it'll make your life easier. You can go ahead and put it in there. All right, and so just like the bummies, I like to quarter up my waistband and snip the ends here before I fold it out. At least I have that one. Okay. So we're going to fold this out here. And as you can see, when you do the sandwich technique, it go ahead. I don't, we're going to call that a sandwich technique. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you call it, but that's what I'm going to call it. So, um, so here is what um, will happen. You've got a perfectly good even seam waistband and so that back part here is not super bulky as it would be if you try to just fold it um serge it halfway and then fold it so i'm gonna meet the part that i snipped to the back seam here just to cut my other two side pieces here to make my little marks so i'm gonna cut And all that quartering really does is just make sure that you, um, it basically makes your waistband more even. It helps you to not have more fabric on one side than the other because you're going to mark, you're going to match it up, which this already has four points. You've got your side seams, seam, seam, front seam, and back seam. So you've already got your four points on your pants to match up. And that's what I'm going to go to do next. I am going to go ahead and put the waistband onto the pants. Um, so you need four pins, and then I like to do mine, um, I'm not sure exactly what the pattern says, sorry I just whistled, not sure exactly what the pattern says to do, but this is how I do my cuffs, I always do them on the outside um, of the garment, just because it's easier for me to see it that way, I don't, I don't know, it's just what I do, so we're going to take this back seam, let me see if you can, what's the best way for me to show you this without it falling. All right, so I'm going to take the back seam of the waistband here. Because I like to match it up to the back. It's just easier to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure you got the back of the, of the bell bottoms, which is the part that's raised higher than the front, remember? The back is higher than the front. For the rise um of to account for the booty so it's got a higher rise in the back so you're going to mark up this back seam and pin it to the back seam <coughs> excuse me oops i'm going to go around in a circle and do the same thing match up the next point that we clipped to the Right seam.
All right, so then there's our waistband on the outside and we're gonna serge around this circle. I like to do the inside just because it's easier to go around in the circle. So basically what you're gonna have to do is just make sure that all of your raw edges are lined up so that you catch them all in this seam because um, that's the most important. So you're gonna go ahead, sit it down in here, drop your foot. Make sure you're removing your pins as you go because your serger will eat them. Also, um, you can use a sewing machine to do this. I just have a serger and find it looks more professional because I sew to sell. If you sew for personal use, a sewing machine is perfectly fine. Um, honestly, some people's customers don't care, but um, I find a lot do. You might think, why would somebody care what the inside of the garment looks like? Um, people are crazy. They do care, so serger is a good investment if you sew to sell and you want your garments to look more professional. Um, on the inside as well as the outside. And so this one's kind of giving me a little trouble here. Okay. Again, the part that I go over here, I always just pluck it to get the crazy strands, pull at it to get the crazy strands here. And then I'll go over and zigzag stitch over where I went over. Um, so basically, though, that's the... Now the waistband is added on to the pants. And then the butt, it just kind of puckers a little bit because it's there's supposed to be room for a booty to go there. So that's why it does that. Um, it's, not gonna, it's not the prettiest flat lay, um, but that's, the, that's that for now. And so now we got to add the bells. Here's the fun part. Okay, so for the bells, to add the bells, you're going to go ahead and pick a leg, any leg. So you got the side seams, that's the two points that I was talking about that we're going to match up. Um, so we're going to put right sides together. We're going to find the little points we clipped, which are going to be here and then down here. So you're going to match them up, basically. So here's the leg. I'm going to match this part up. Here. And match this part up over here. Again, you can quarter this until you get the hang of it, mainly because you're going to have to make sure that you stretch just a little bit because as you can see, it's sagging a little bit. It's not exact. And also, the fabric will start to roll, so make sure that you pay attention to your fabric when it rolls. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. But see, this is the waistband. You can see I got the bell bottoms upside down pretty much. Um, there's a leg, and here's a leg. And I'm just doing one leg for right now. Go ahead and do this first one. I think I'm running out of time on my phone. <laughs> so get your edges matched up. Raw edges lined up. This is the part that gets tricky, especially with velvet. Um, so basically, you just make sure, going around the side, and just make sure that you don't have any folds in your fabric. Because if you do, you'll be able to see them. Make sure you remove your pin. Go in a circle. Unroll your fabric as it tries to roll. Pull this down as needed. Be super careful not to sew your finger too, because that would hurt. So then there, 
is uh, one bell bottom. And you're just gonna repeat. All right, so next we're gonna do the next bell bottom here. Same way we did the first one. Did the last piece, the last leg here. You got your side seam and your side seam. So you're gonna make, remember we marked here, here. And then we cut here, down here at the bottom, right there. So you're gonna fold those on top of that and match up your points again. Last point here. All right. So make sure our edges are met, are pulled to close together. So now when we start this seam here, I'm going to go ahead and pull my pin out. And then. Trying to be safe. Don't forget your pen. Again, this is the part that most people get frustrated about because it's a small circle. And the more you stretch it all of it, the more it rolls. And so it's hard to like keep what you what you're doing like neat. Um, but just be patient with it patient with it and move it make it do what you need it to do and try to hold on to it but don't forget to let go because you will get your fingers caught in the machine almost done So that's how you sew the bell bottoms and with this pattern it's a fabric waistband that can be like folded down when they wear it um, but super cute um, these are one of our best sellers you could do velvet you can do double brush poly you can do um, Liverpool bullet knit whichever scuba even looks really cute in these um, but really this, this is a really pretty fabric, and they, they're super flowy, and we love this one. Um, only thing that you need, let me go ahead and, <clears throat> alright, guys, with this pattern, with CKC's pattern, with the girls 2T, it is weird. I don't know what they were doing. Or why they did it this way, but to save you the trouble, if you are trying to sew a size 2T, use the 3T or use the 18 to 24 months. Um, use, the eight, use the 3T and like take a, an inch off maybe or half an inch off of the length. Um, but the leg part of the 2T is way too small. I don't know unless your kid is a skinny, skinny, skinny 2T and doesn't wear diapers. It may work, but save yourself the troubles. Their, their 2T in the pattern is just not the best drafted. I don't know why they did that, but the 18 to 24 month 
and then the 2T are drastically two different sizes. The 18 to 24 month is way much, like so much more bigger, or so, yeah, so much more big than the 2T. So save yourself the trouble, and if you're wanting the size 2T, or if you're trying to sell the size 2T, use the 18 to 24 months and an ad length, or use the 2T, or 3T, sorry, use the 3T, which is what we do in our shop. We use the 3T and we just take off a little bit of length on the legs um, and we just use the same bell pot for the 2T. But it's just that leg part, the leg part on the 2T for that pattern is really narrow. Um, and you'll have some very upset customers if you try to use it. But that being said, here's the bell bottoms. Hope it was fairly easy for you guys. This is a, um, a fickle fabric to sew, but it makes a really cute outcome. And there we go. Hope you guys love it. And make sure you subscribe for the more videos that we're going to keep coming out with. Um, we are planning on coming out with a lot more videos, so keep uh, suggestions coming in the comments. Um, I don't know, just keep supporting us because we, we love it. We love that you guys love what we're doing. And we're excited to be able to keep doing this for you guys. And we love giving back this community. The small shop world has brought so much to our life. And we're just trying to give a little bit more back to the small shop community. And, I mean, you guys are great. And you guys are just like us. And um, even just the mamas or grandmas that are trying to sew for their kids, we appreciate you. And... I guess that's it. Um, we're going to try to come up with a Facebook group. Um, so be looking out for that. We're going to try to come out with a Facebook group where people can, um, where we can talk as like a community rather than like um, from a business standpoint because people, I don't think people feel comfortable coming into our group right now that we sell through and um, sharing what they made for themselves through our product or through our videos. So we're going to try to create a separate group for makers and people who are using our videos and whatnot to, to share their makes and ask questions and help each other, you know, do better. So it'd be really cool. So you guys uh, think that's a good idea. Let us know, give us a, a you know, a thumbs up in the um, comments. Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe.